All right, uh, let's now move on where the Catholic Church has vowed to be in the forefront in the fight against corruption in Kenya. Speaking after an Indo meeting held in Nairobi this morning, Archbishop Anthony Muheria said they will unveil corruption fighting agenda dubbed Breaking the Chain, which will be launched early next month in Nakuru County. On the question of corruption in the country, we've... Uh, We've taken time to reflect on uh, media performance in that question, but also the Catholic Church's performance uh, on that question. Uh, the Archbishop uh, and uh, his team uh, took time to share with us their thoughts on the issue, and uh, they do have some uh, upcoming uh, plans uh, to deal with that question, and I want to hand over to him very briefly uh, share that with you. Individuals must now take upon ourselves and no longer just point fingers upon ourselves to make a stand, to make a commitment and show it externally and that we are going from down up. We are not looking at name calling, we are not looking at who and why, it's about us and starting from the ground, starting from the grassroots, we want the commitments to grow along. It's more inward conversion and not just outward statement and rhetoric and the bishops will be leading on the front line. Now it is World Maritime Day and Kenya has joined the world in marking the day which is commemorated annually on the 26th of September. This year's theme is empowering women in the maritime community which highlights the important contribution of women in the industry. This year it is women it's all about women and the role they play. Why was it considered important to highlight women in maritime sector? It's because this has been a traditionally male-dominated industry and the recognition that to have sustainability, you cannot exclude a whole part of humanity. Women form part of half of humanity and if they are not involved in order to get sustainable, uh, economic growth in countries, then you are also ignoring the SDGs, SDG number five, equity, gender equity. And therefore, this is why IMO thought it fit to bring out this aspect in shipping. So this is IMO's contribution, actually, the shipping industry's contribution to SDG number five. It's been a momentous year. We celebrate women. Talk about opportunities of women in the maritime sector. The maritime sector has changed. It's been the driver of economic uh, uh, growth in countries. GDPs must depend on the economic, uh, I mean, on the role of shipping in the economic sector. Traditionally, uh, if, if we could say women have not been heard, and historically we know that for a woman to be able to go to sea, they had to disguise themselves as men. Uh, and of course, her career ended when she was found out by the captain and she had to leave her job. But now the various sectors that women can play have improved, have, have increased because we've got uh, offshore industries. The dynamism of the sector has increased. We've got cruise tourism and therefore we are seeing increasingly uh, women being able to play a bigger role. Some of the traditional issues that have held them back also, there are policy issues around them. For example, the, sea, uh, the lack of sea time for cadets because sea time is an important component of the training and certification and qualification uh, of seafarers. So the idea is to 